Hi, in this video, we're going to be walking through the topic modeling example from chapter 17. Uh, topic modeling is a relatively new concept or tool that marketers have in their toolkit. Historically, if you wanted to know, uh, let's say, what people perceive about your product, you would go out and survey your consumers, talk to them, find out what they're saying, compile the data and analyze it. And that can be a timely consuming process and it might be hard to find audiences to survey and so on. So one way to begin exploratory marketing research might be to go out and actually capture what consumers are saying and analyze that data. Uh, and this type of unstructured data would be text data. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to capture some text data in this case, some product review uh, and product rating data. And we're gonna build a topic model that will help us understand what people are saying about a product, as well as linking what they're saying, these topics, to whether or not they're rating the product highly, in which case we'll call them positive topics, or they're rating the product uh, low, which we'll call them negative topics. And this will give us a sense of doing some market research uh, without surveys, but do the market research that will help us get some insights about uh, our product or even a com competitor's product. So let's go ahead and go over to R and look at how to do this. So the first step uh, is we're going to open up our script file. In this case, it's called Topic Modeling. Go ahead and make it a little bit bigger here. So the first thing we always do is we see whether or not there are any packages we need to load. Uh, we see here there's quite a few packages to load. Uh, this is a relatively new development, so there's a lot of user written packages for it. So we'll be loading the STM package, the TM, the uh, RTSNE package, RSVD, Geometry, Snowball C, and Word Cloud. And these will all help us do the analysis that we need to do. So let's go ahead and get these packages installed. I'm just going to pick the cloud. So these packages will take just a minute to download and install. Okay, so now we've uh, downloaded all the packages. Let's go ahead and load the libraries and set our random number generating seed. Okay, all right, so next step is we're gonna load up the data. So we've captured some data on some product reviews uh, and product ratings for one of our competing products. This is the Apple Watch product. So let's go ahead and load in the reviews data. Um, so this will be called reviews underscore data. And I've gone ahead and put in the, the code here, if you, if you remember from other videos, we can type in the console head and then the name of the, the uh, table, and that will let us see sort of a, a small snapshot of the uh, first few rows of the table. I went ahead and put that here so we can look at the review data. Uh, the first column of the data is the title of the review. So this is what whoever wrote the review, they gave themselves a title. You can see what some of the sample titles are. The second column um, is the text, which is a very long column. So you can actually scroll to the right all the way, and you can see here that this is the review text column. Uh, and these are the things people are saying about the product, in this case, the Apple Watch product. We also have a column for review stars. So this is a uh, between one and five star rating that we're given. And each of the review pages, um, uh, there are 10 reviews per page. So it also captured how many pages of reviews that, that were taken from the website as well. So now that we've sort of seen a high level view, uh, we can begin processing this data so that we can run the topic model. Now, if you have uh, a, a Macintosh-based computer, uh, you'll have to run this next line. 
uh, which will encode the text in a way that the Mac computers can actually analyze it. If you don't have a Mac computer, you don't run this line uh, and we'll go ahead and process the documents. I don't have a Mac that I'm running this on, so I'm gonna go ahead and move down to processing the documents. Now, when you're processing documents to get them ready for topic modeling, the first thing you might wanna do are identify what are called custom words, custom stop words, words that we wanna pull out because they're so frequent uh, and they don't give much meaning to what we're doing. And in this case, because it's an Apple Watch product, we're gonna take out the word watch, we're gonna take out the word Apple. And a lot of people also, when, it, when they're talking about the product, giving the syncing to the iPhone, so we're gonna take that out as well. So we're gonna go ahead and tell the word processing, please take out these three words and ignore them so that all of our topics don't have the words Apple and watch and iPhone in them. Uh, then we'll process the words. And by processing the words, it means that uh, we'll be taking out those custom words but we'll also be splitting up the words into different pieces, right? So we'll be splitting them into what are called documents, which will be the various reviews, the vocabulary, which will be a unique list of all of the kept vocabulary, um, and meta, which are some tags that we'll, we'll be able to use as well. So we'll go ahead and, and process the documents and you'll see uh, sort of how it goes through and scrapes out the, the meaningful, useful words for us. So here it's gonna start building everything and, and stemming refers to the idea that it cuts off the ends of words uh, to try and create root words that can be compared and it'll begin to create our output. So removed all the, the common stop words, our custom words, uh, punctuation, converts everything to lowercase so it can compare evenly, uh, it cuts off the ends of the words to get the root stems and then generates the final uh, useful set of documents, vocabulary, and meta. I didn't even tell you how many um, uh, you, you remained with. In fact, there were some documents where the reviews were so short and all the words got removed that, that the documents themselves were removed from the analysis because they didn't have any useful words left. So next step, we're gonna actually run the topic model. So this actually takes quite a bit of time because we're gonna let the software, in this case, the, the package, the STM package, help us determine how many topics there are. So we're gonna say, here are our documents. Here's the vocabulary you can choose from. K is the number of topics. When you set K equal to zero, it means the algorithm will determine what it thinks is the best number of topics. If you already know how many topics you want, you can set K equal to some number, positive number. We're going to use that same random number generating seed. We're going to say that review star is sort of the outcome eventually of our interest. Uh, and we're going to attach the meta uh, documents or meta words as well uh, and use this certain type of uh, the algorithm, the spectral. So we're going to run this. And this will be our topic model. Now, this takes a, potentially the more data that you have. Uh, the more vocabulary that you have, the more documents that you have, the longer it takes it to iteratively go through and figure out how many documents uh, or topics that are coming out of your documents, right? So what you'll see, I can kind of uh, click here. It'll take a second, and but it'll show me uh, progress that it's making. So it's beginning the process. It's starting to look for these different topics, and then it's going to iteratively go through and see whether or not it finds better ways to organize the data until it's happy, until it converges. So you'll see here that uh, as I keep sort of clicking, it's going to start its iterations. At this point, because it, this I know takes a little bit of time, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording now uh, and magically come back once this is done. You can let yours run in the meantime, uh, but it will likely take uh, several minutes of running.
So several minutes have now passed. The algorithm is continuing to run, but it's almost finished uh, where it's going to go. And what you can see here is that throughout your steps of the algorithm, uh, it will show you how it's making some uh, decisions about grouping together topics. And you can begin to see sort of what are the top topics uh, of each or top words, uh, vocabulary words in each of the topics. So the model finally converged, uh, looks like after 196 uh, iterations. Uh, so now we have completed the topic model. Let's see what's inside of it. Now we can certainly see here that the this last iteration had 57 different topics in it. But we can also uh, determine number of topics by using this uh, bit of code here. If we run that, it'll confirm what we have above here and say that there are 57 uh, topics. So the next thing we want to do is we actually want to link topics to ratings, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to estimate a model where we're going to look at the prevalence of a given topic showing up more or less often when ratings are higher or lower. And then we'll go ahead and plot the results of that. So that's what this section will do. We'll link the topics with the ratings. This takes just a few seconds to process. There we go. So the figure we get here, we'll go ahead and drag it to the right here and make it a little bigger. Each topic, we see the 57 topics compared to the average rating. And what this is saying is that any topic, so any dot that shows up to the right of this line is a topic that shows up more often when ratings are higher. And any topic to the left shows up more often when the ratings are lower. So the, the bars around the topics tell you, you know, this, think of this as a confidence interval. Uh, so certainly if the left hand side of the confidence interval is still on the right, uh, then we're sure this topic shows up with higher ratings. If the confidence interval bar crosses, it means that, yes, on average, uh, it is a little higher, like we see here, but it's still not much different than the average. So we see here there are a few topics that are more related to positive uh, ratings, and there are some topics that are negative. So if we go ahead and look here, it looks like we have topic 26 is pretty positive, uh, topic 12 is pretty positive, topic 29, uh, and we could keep going after that, but we'll go ahead and look at the top three topics. Uh, over here, we see topic 18 is a negative topic, topic 41 is also negative, and so is topic 40. So given that knowledge, uh, I've gone ahead and, and written those down below. So we can close this window and go down here and say, let's generate a word cloud for these topics that we just highlighted, the positive topics and the negative topics. And let's see what, what's in there to help explain what, what might be going on, right? So let's go ahead and, and run the first one. Kind of drag this over here. So the larger the word, if you've not seen a word cloud before, the larger the word that shows up, the more that word matters in this topic. Uh, and then the other words also help give us context, right? So we see here that obviously a very positive topic is how much people are writing about how much they love the Apple Watch. You can also see in the little tiny bits here uh, that it's oftentimes that it was a gift. Uh, I see daughter, I see wife. Um, grandmother, husband, and so on. So it looks like these topics that, that got good ratings are all about how much the person that they gave the Apple Watch to loves the watch, right? So that's our first topic. Uh, let's go ahead and highlight our second one. When we run that, it'll update the figure here. And we see here that this one is that uh, people generally think that it's a great price or good or a great price. So essentially they think that the value they're getting from the watch is good for what they paid, right? So that's what this topic seems to be about. The third topic has a lot more stuff going on in it. 
Uh, what we see here is that this top this topic says the phone or the uh, the watch can do stuff. It can message. It can be a phone. It can call. It can text. It can have notifications and so on. So this says people really value and rate highly the fact that this Apple Watch can do so many things. Right. So this tells you that part of the value this this product has in people's minds comes from its ability to multitask in all these different ways. Right? So that just gives us an idea of what people think of, uh, in this case, the Apple Watch, that might help us understand why people like it so much. Uh, we can also look at the negative side, right? So uh, one of our topics on the negative side was topic 18. So this topic seems to be about the screen and replacing the screen maybe after a month or after a week, it cracked. So some questions about durability of the, the glass face of, of the watch. So this might suggest that if you were Apple or anybody else making a smartwatch, that it's very important that you consider the issues of durability of the face of the watch, because this seems to be a complaint that the number of people have had. Uh, the second topic on negative. This one seems to be more related to uh, the fact that they bought the watch. Maybe they bought it through Amazon and it had issues around returning and getting support for the watch, right? So in this case, it maybe is more about the reverse logistics or the customer support issues. So it suggests that customers really value the ability to get help, whether it's to return or exchange a product, or perhaps if they have questions about the product. And if you don't resolve that well with them, that they are going to give you negative ratings. The last, uh, the third of the topics here for negative. So this topic seems to be about the charger and the Apple Watch charger is different from uh, the charger of other products which might suggest that you know, maybe they didn't get a charger or previous versions didn't use the same charger, which required them to get a new one, right? So this says something about when you make product changes or you don't give customers, say in this case, the charger with the new product they purchase, that can be something that they find to be negative. So, so it does suggest to you how you deliver the product to the customer or any product changes you might make, you need to be sensitive about how customers think about those product changes. So what this hopefully showed you uh, as sort of a new way of doing market research is that you can go out and get unstructured types of data, in this case, uh, text data, and you can run topic models. Uh, you don't have to have the ratings to match with them. You can just run the topic models and see what topics come up where topics are just words that tend to show up together uh, in the different documents that you have. If you do have something like ratings or some outcome measure that, that sort of links to positive or negative outcomes, you can run the second half of the analysis where you can begin to show which topics that you created with your topic model actually relate to uh, different outcomes. So this is an example of, of sort of new and interesting uh, uh, market research tools that you might find useful um, in, in doing uh, things other than perhaps surveying customers.